Welcome back guys. Well today I'm out here in the woods and we're on the hunt for chaga, a medicinal mushroom. Let's poke around the woods and see what we can find. So while we're out here looking for chaga in the woods, you probably want to know where on earth are we going to find the chaga. Well most commonly it's found on birch trees. So there's a couple of birch trees I want to introduce you to that we have here in Ontario. Conveniently they are right beside each other here. So let's take a look at this tree right here and you'll take a look at the bark. It's very papery. Kind of got little strands on it when it comes off the tree. This tree right here is called the yellow birch. As you can also see here, there's a little bit of a yellow tint to it. Over here, on the other hand, we have a paper birch or a white birch tree. So you can see all the way up, it's fairly white with some black markings on it. And uh, a lot of you guys that start fires um, at camp will know about the bark on the tree. Kind of curls like that. And if you look at it, it's very much like paper. It's an excellent fire starter, lots of resin in there, so it lights up and it's a very good fire starter. So we look for chaga, we're gonna be looking up and down the tree. Chaga tends to be anywhere along the uh, trunk. I found it kind of at eye level here, and I've also found it up way high. When you look for chaga, you spend a tremendous amount of time looking up and looking way up the tree, trying to look for it. And uh, your neck gets a little bit sore. Thankfully, there's lots of birch around here, so I'm hoping to find some today. Here's a really nice birch stand in here. A few aspen in there as well. Fortunately, I don't see any chag on these. These are pretty young trees. Chaga parasitizes the birch tree. I don't see any here. There's a little stream forming in the forest. This is some runoff heading out towards my bay there. And uh, a lot of little animals probably come here and have a fresh drink of water. So looking at these birches for chaga, and I'm looking up here and, well, that's not chaga, that's a fir tree. And looks like there's a nest in there. Let's take a quick peek. Very cool. Something was nesting in there. I wonder what it was. Fairly large nest taking up most of this trunk there on that side. Here's a perfect specimen of a paper birch. So you can see the bark peels right off like that. And there's that excellent fire starter that we all use and just kind of peels off like that. Lots of resin in there so fires start really quickly. I'm poking around. Take a look down there. It looks like some kind of little den or something for something. There's a little spot to, to hide out in the winter just underneath this uh, cedar tree right here. Another thing that commonly gets mistaken for chaga are burls on trees. So this is a, an outgrowth of a tree here and uh, that is not chaga. Also, if you look at the bark of this tree, this is actually a white cedar. So definitely not a tree that you would find chaga on. Well, this isn't chaga and it's not a mushroom either. It looks like some form of uh, lichen. It's kind of looks almost like it's gone to flower. Look at that. It's really weird. Nice thick green stem. It's actually coming out of this moss. So never seen that. In this area here you see a tree, it's a conifer, and it looks like chaga on there. This is not chaga either. This is just a form of rot. So it's firmly affixed there, but that's not chaga. It's the wrong kind of tree, and it's not the right kind of fungus. Another example of a chaga lookalike is black knot fungus. So this right here is uh, choke cherry. Now when they're bigger and they're bigger trees, I can see why people would confuse it. It looks black, but the difference is this envelops basically the stem. This affects um, shrubs by the genus name of Prunus. So if you break it apart, it falls off the stem. And it's black, but it's definitely not chaga. And of course this is on the wrong kind of tree, or shrub I should say in this case. So this is a choke cherry that has black knot fungus on it. This is not chaga. Just walking in the woods here, I see some uh, Tremides elegans. So that's a polypore fungus that's kind of white on the top, a little bit uh, pale tan on the underside. So Tremides elegans. This is a non-edible polypore fungus. Look it, I found some turkey tail. So this is a wild medicinal fungus. So this is also great to have in tea, much like chaga. 
and uh, it also has purported medicinal benefits. So I've done many videos on the uh, turkey tail fungus and uh, you can take a look at those but uh, notice why it's called turkey tail. It's got these beautiful colored bands. So the tree behind me here is an aspen tree and only one time I've found chaga on aspen. It's not very common. It's more common on white birch and yellow birch but I found it one time here at the property. So how cool is that? Uh, I didn't believe it. I took a picture of it, had to analyze it, had another expert look at it and agreed that yeah, that was indeed chaga, so it can happen. So I want to show you something else. So here's a birch tree that's fallen down and you'll see a lot of little black lumps on it. You might get all excited that uh, this is some easily accessible chaga. And let's take a closer look. You know, this is not chaga, unfortunately. This is horse hoof fungus, so it's rotted. Um, and it's kind of a black color and I'll just show you another one over here it's in the shape of a horse hoof so typically these sort of face downward so that was the uh, the trunk of the tree went down to the ground that way so this is not chaga it is a, of course it is attached to the bark like you would with chaga just peel a chunk off here okay so as you can see it's black all the way through and it's rotten so normally it goes on the tree like that the flat part points down, and this is not chaga. This is a different kind of fungus. When it's in good shape, it actually uh, can be used to uh, start fires. You can get the amadou, uh, which is a layer of this mushroom out of here to create a good fire starter. So darn, not chaga, but I just want to make you guys aware of that. This tree is a fallen tree, obviously, and you can see lots of the horse hoof fungus on it. You can also see it, the fungus on there when it's upright, but uh, not chaga. And this is the rest of the tree, just to show you. It's, real, it's basically attached to a cedar at the base. There's two different trees here, actually. But there you go. You can see what I mean by the horse hoof fungus going all the way up the uh, tree there. So here we are. Just zoomed in there, and you can see how it naturally presents on the tree in an upright position. So gonna go up this trunk here. Take a look. Oh, I see something. Let's zoom in. And there we go, there's your chaga. It's a black fungus and the inside is nice and brown. It's kind of lumpy and it lives just off the bark there. So very easy to access. This is the time of year you wanna harvest the chaga uh, in very early spring. And remember, this is something that takes a long time to grow. You don't wanna take the whole thing or get an ax and chop it off the tree at the hub. Basically, you wanna take off a little bit, a small portion just for yourself for personal use. I've nurtured some areas of chaga for many, many, many years. Basically, you just wanna take a little piece off um, and just leave the base still attached to the tree. Uh, you really don't wanna harm this fungus. It takes a very long time to grow and you wanna save your medicinal mushrooms for the future. So keep that in mind. So here I've got a ladder from the cabin and just gonna pop up and grab the chaga. I'll just show you what I'm gonna use. All right, so this is a tool I'm gonna to use. It's a sickle. Uh, it's a handheld one. Sometimes you can use it for weeding in the garden, you know, cutting some grass or things around. I've used it around basically the pines in my little plantation there. So I'm gonna use this to saw off a chunk of the chaga. As you can see, I've left a big hunk of chaga still on there. You want to leave the base there so that it continues to grow over the years. There I go. I've got some nice chunks of chaga there. Let's head back to the cabin and we'll put them in some hot water and have some chaga tea. So back at the cabin, I've got several chunks right here and you can see there's black on the outside and that kind of, I don't know, coffee colored uh, look to the inside of the chaga. For long term storage, you can dry these out and keep them in a cool, dry place. Um, today I'm going to put a few chunks in here in my little teapot there, well it's actually a little old coffee pot. Um, so yeah, 
don't know, about an ounce or so to about a liter of water and chopped up into chunks. And you're going to let it uh, sort of sit in not boiling water. You're going to want to steep it basically for an hour and a half in about 80 degrees Celsius water. So kind of like if you're going to do a green tea uh, temperature wise, you don't want this boiling away or anything like that. So uh, I'll pop some chunks in here and we'll get ready to make some tea. Alrighty, time's up. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Ooh, that looks good. Mmm, smells good too. Very earthy. Let's pour out a glass. Ooh, nice color. This teapot strains out the chunks. You don't want to eat the chunks. Mmm, it's really nice. Tastes very mushroomy, woodsy, earthen. Really enjoy the taste of it. Many people swear by it. Some people say it has anti-cancer properties, anti-inflammatory properties, uh, helps with arthritis, some people say, lowers blood sugar. I wish they did a lot more studies on chaga so we could all know about this for sure and to know exactly what doses to take. But uh, for now, I just enjoy it as a lovely uh, drink just from the forest. Really nice at the end of a day when I've gone hiking around. Well, I hope you guys learned a lot about chaga today and uh, maybe you'll find some this spring. Remember to harvest responsibly and uh, check with your healthcare professional to see if chaga is right for you. All right, I hope you guys have a wonderful week as always. Take care.